It can be daunting doing a webcomic, so we're going to do an entire webcomic from start to finish, and we're starting with the writing. Hey, Walter here, and today we are going to be writing our webtoon. Now, I'm not gonna go over the birth of the idea, the world building, the character creation. Let's say we have all of that stuff out of the way, and now it's time to get onto the actual grunt work of making the comic. You know, the writing, the drawing, the coloring, the lettering, the uploading. Uh, but before we do that, I wanna get to know you a little bit better. I wanna know where you're at in your comic making process. Uh, are you still working on the world and the characters or have you started writing, have you started drawing, lettering, coloring, uploading maybe? And if you have started uploading, let me know what the comic is and drop a link so that I can check it out so we get to know each other a little bit better. Uh, but for now, let's get on to writing our webtoon. We're gonna start with an outline. Uh, usually I'd outline my entire story before scripting anything, and my outlines are basically just a bullet point list of things that are happening in my story. It's an easy way to keep track of how the story is moving, very helpful for figuring out like what's gonna happen next. A few things to keep in mind with an outline are uh, keep it simple, don't overthink it, especially when you're just starting your story. Write down anything that comes to mind. It could be a cool line of dialogue. It could be like some cool action scene you thought of or like a location you want to do. Don't overthink it, just free your mind. So for the outline, we just start with a bullet point list. I wasn't really sure where I was going with this story. I only knew that I wanted to start with a scene in outer space with a spaceship. Uh, I'll be making this up as I go, which is the great part about an outline. It's really easy to just write down a sentence of something that's happening. You don't really have to worry about it being grammatically correct or uh, it working very with the story. It's easy to erase the line, add a line, whatever you wanna do, just don't overthink it. We just wanna get the ideas down. So I'm just kinda of going with the flow. One event is leading into another event. Like look how simple everything is. Joe's on a ship, there's alert. Uh, or this last one, Syndra outsmarts him. How does she do it? I don't know yet, I'll figure it out later. I could even add ideas on how she, she tricks him, you know, like maybe she stole his keys or hacked into his computer. Uh, just quick ideas that I could throw down. Maybe I'll use them, maybe I won't, I don't know. And that's the best part of the outline. You just get to vomit out your thoughts. You can worry about cleaning it up later. And right here, I'm just cleaning up the outline to show you like how I would actually do it for a full webtoon script. I would break them out into the episodes so I could figure out exactly how much is going into a single episode so that the episode isn't too short or too long. All right, so now we're moving on to the actual script. Now I'm doing everything in Google Docs. I love Google Docs because it saves it automatically for me. It's all online so I can access my scripts from anywhere. I can look at it on my phone. I could write it on my phone. It just simplifies everything and I know that it works and you don't need a bunch of flowery uh, formatting, automatic formatting to write a script. You can keep it it super basic, which I totally prefer. For Webtoon, since there aren't any pages, I just make a script for each episode and name it appropriately. And then it's just endless panels, one panel after the other. And there's a really cool Google Docs add-on that will help with the numbering of the panels, but I'll show that a little bit later. So here we're entering simple panel descriptions. You start with the panel section, then you have the description, then you have the character name and their dialogue, and then you have the sound effects. Now a panel doesn't need to have all of these. Also, if you're drawing it, you don't need as much of a panel description. Uh, if you're having somebody else draw it, you should have more of a description. Uh, for example, if you have a panel that looks like this, panel, Joe, what are you doing? Now, if you're drawing it, you know what Joe is feeling here. But if somebody else is drawing it, they're, they're gonna have to guess. Uh, if they guess wrong, you're gonna have to ask the artist to redraw it, which is a big time waster and it's super annoying. I do not like doing that. So what we do is we add a panel description. Panel, Joe looks at him with disgust. Joe, what are you doing? Uh, now the artist knows what Joe should be looking at and it gives a lot of context as what else is going on in the scene. Uh, who knows what Joe's disgusted about, I don't know. 
So here's an important note. I'm starting off with an establishing shot. Um, it's really important to let the reader and also the artist know where they are in the story, where they are in the world. Like, are they in outer space? Are they in a grocery store? Are they in an abandoned warehouse? So we usually start off new scenes with an establishing shot. There could be reasons why you wouldn't do this because you want to keep the reader guessing. Uh, but for most of the time, we want to start with an establishing shot so that readers aren't guessing what's going on or where they are. For example, if we were to show in the first panel that we are in a giant mansion, then for the rest of the panels after that, we don't have to draw as much of the background, as much of the mansion, because we did all of the work in the first panel for the reader. Of course, every like five to 10 panels, you wanna do something in that panel to remind the reader where they are, that they're still in this mansion. Uh, but that's gonna be more of a choice for the artist to make. It's not really something that you wanna write into the script itself, unless there's something really specific that needs to show up so that the reader can see it, in which case you would wanna call it out in the script. So that's an important note, actually. Scripts don't have to be flowery. It's not a novel. It's more of like an architectural plan for the building that will be your story. Architects don't draw up plans and then put cute ribbons and flowers on them with impressive calligraphy. Uh, that would be pointless because no one would really care and all that stuff would get in the way of clarity and make it harder for the builder to actually build the building. So take note of the second panel. I use the word lounging. It is a great word that tells a lot about the character, but notice I didn't say very much about the ship itself. I'm drawing it so I have an idea of what the ship's actually gonna look like. But if you are only writing and you have an artist, then you're gonna have to add a little bit more detail, like the ship is worn down and it hasn't been taken care of, wires hang loosely from open panels and there's junk strewn around, light glows from various screens and control knobs. Like this is stuff that's gonna help the artist visualize what this spaceship should look like. So with the panel descriptions, you put that at the top and then you go to dialogue and sound effects. You don't wanna take descriptions and scatter them throughout a panel heading. Uh, because that's just gonna get confusing. It's easier for the artist to see everything that's supposed to happen and then make room for the dialogue. Otherwise, it's gonna be hard to like look around and quickly see what should be happening in the description. So my script here is pretty simple. I don't have a lot of super talky talky moments. Uh, I've gotten scripts with so much dialogue smashed into a single panel, it's really impossible. It's a huge pain to try to make it fit, which of course raises the question of how much dialogue can one fit into a panel if a panel was gonna fit so much dialogue and Sally was gonna sell she, she shores. Anyways, how much dialogue can one fit into a panel? With Webtoon, you can really fit as much as you want, but it's gonna hurt the reading experience if you put way too much dialogue in there per panel. Figuring out how much dialogue you can actually put in is mostly gonna come with experience. After you write slash draw a few scripts, you're gonna notice times where there is too much text and it has forced the art to be pushed down so low that the reader has to read basically a huge novel before ever seeing any artwork. Remember, this is a comic, not a novel. There should be art accompanying your words. So if you put too many words in there, they're gonna have to read this huge dump of text before ever seeing any artwork and that kind of defeats the whole point of comics. So you would have to split that dialogue up into multiple panels or make a really long panel that has cool stuff in the artwork while they're reading all of these words. Uh, the other cool thing about Webtoon versus a traditional comic is that you can put dialogue above and below a panel so you can fit more words in per panel. So here's another simple panel description. I'm not describing the characters because that is stuff that would probably come up in the character design and details backstory part of the whole creation process. This is also a pretty rough transition from this panel to that panel, uh, but you'll see how we can fix this during the thumbnailing phase of the process, which will be the next video. All right, so notice here, I changed leaning to lounging. Now I did that because I felt like leaning over the display would make Syndra seem more tense, like agitated, losing control, like she needed the display to hold her up, otherwise she would fall down um, from all of her emotions. But what I really wanted, I wanted her to seem kind of like the ruler of the world, like she's chilling, like she owns this situation. It's little things like this which can help guide the art into telling a complete narrative. Uh, now you wouldn't need a dialogue line like, I am not worried at all, I'm in complete control. Uh, comics are all about showing and not telling. Uh, the reader won't even realize what they're realizing about the situation if you do it right. It's important to think about your descriptions, especially if you're working with an artist 
A description needs to capture a moment. Writing a description that includes multiple events happening in sequential order uh, will drive an artist insane. Like for example, if I got this panel description, uh, Sam gets out of the car, slams the door shut, walks up the townhome stairs and angrily knocks on the door. What the hell am I supposed to do with that? I would go completely insane and shout silent curses at the writer. Comic writing really needs to compact moments into their most important parts. Uh, comics have these things called gutters, the empty space between the panels. Uh, stuff happens in the gutters. Time moves in the gutters. Writers have to take advantage of that. So for this panel, uh, it has four moments. Getting out of the car, slamming the door, walking up the stairs, and knocking on the door. Uh, so the question is, is do we need to break this up into four panels? Uh, four panels would take up a lot of room. It could almost become its own page for this one panel description, but we might not have to do that. We could simply do this. Panel one, Sam slams the door shut, looking at the door to the town home. Panel two, Sam knocks angrily on the door. So we condensed it a lot, but we are making the assumption that the reader is going to understand two things. One, the reader is going to understand that Sam got out of the car even though we're not showing it. And also that they will realize that Sam is knocking on the door that we saw established in panel one. That is the power of comics if you have good writing and good art. So an artist might have been able to fix this on their own just like we just did right now. But if you're a writer and you want to be a good comic writer and have happy artists, this is something you want to think about on your own as you're writing so you can plan for it as opposed to having an artist having to figure out how to rewrite the script to work as a comic book. And it could also go the other way. As an artist, I might read our new script and think, wait, we really need a third panel here that shows Sam stomping up the stairs. So the artist would make that call to add that panel on their own. So back to our script, every spaceship has a button that says warp on it, right? Okay, right here, I just type parentheses OS. OS stands for off screen, which means the character is not in the panel, but is still speaking. Uh, there is also VO, which is voice over. Uh, this is usually used for narration. The character is nowhere near the scene and the characters in the scene are unaware of the narrator. Um, also, if the character is calling on a phone, you might want to designate this also for the letterer, something like Alice, parentheses, phone, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and here I'm using CU, which means close up, uh, means we move in really close on the character, basically tight on their face so we can see the expression. Uh, there is also ECU, which is extreme close up, and then you got medium for like torso and up shots, wide, long. There's a whole bunch of them, you can look them up, but basically it's just saying like how close or how far away the camera is from our subject. And usually we use stuff like wide shots for our establishing shots because we can fit the most information into that. So usually I would say you wouldn't want to include these camera directions into the script. You want to leave that up to the artist to figure out what works best artistically. That's what they do. That's their job. That's what they are good at. Uh, for example, here, instead of using close up of Joe, I should have wrote something like uh, Joe's mouth drops open. The, the extreme close up or the close up is kind of implied, but it doesn't force your artist to work inside of a box. Okay, so the script is all done and now I'm going to use that cool Google Docs add-on that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so I go through and I change all of the panels to a header type. Uh, you can use a shortcut key to apply this, which is basically Control alt one and you'll make it all a header one. Then I use this plugin and it will auto magically number all the panels for us. I love this so much. It's great for when you like add a panel that wasn't there before, you run this plugin and it's gonna renumber everything for you. I love it so much. I love you plugin, thank you. Okay, so that is how you script your webtoon. In the next video, we are going to be thumbnailing this script that we just wrote. Now, thumbnailing is the most critical part about comic artwork. It's not about the flash and the dazzle, it's all about storytelling, which is the core of making comics. We will be composing these panels. I'll show you like why I'm doing it the way I am, and also how I fix some of the problems I found in the script I just wrote. So make sure you sub to not miss that video. And if you would like to help me make more videos and look dope fresh while doing it, why not check out my t-shirt store? <laughs> Otherwise, be sure to like, link, love, hug and sub for more sweet, sweet goodness. Peace.